Welcome back to another episode of Technology for Independence with Christopher Cooley. Today, we're going to be talking with an individual and assist individuals with remote support. So stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of Technology for Independence with Christopher Cooley. Chris, you have a really good guest today in talking about remote support. Yes. Um, thank you for having me, Patrick, um, on, on here today. And um, believe it or not, today is uh, 33 years anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And... Um, Back in the early 90s, um, they, they came out with a bill um, for technology, um, encouraging all um, disability boards, you know, talk to their individuals about different technology. And a few years later, um, came out, came out and, uh, you know, remote support team, which worked with us in our home, gives us a lot of support. And I came um, brought Kelly in to help me explain what um, Safe and Home Remote Support is and um, how they work with individuals inside their home. And so I'm going to let Kelly um, introduce herself and, and just take a few minutes and um, and explain what remote support is and what um, Safe and Home is. Hello, I'm Kelly Ferrari. I work for Safe and Home. Um, I'm the Senior Manager of Client Service and Remote Supports. I'll give you guys a little bit of, of what that is when we start, you know, diving into it a little bit more. Um, I love working with people. I love helping people. I love interacting with people. I just love being, I also love being the face of Safe and Home. I love coming out and talking about what we do because I feel very passionate about what we do. So tell us a little bit about uh, Safe and Home. So Safe and Home, our mission is to empower people to live independently in their own homes and communities. At Safe and Home, we have a vision. The vision is to make the dream of independence for individuals real. So what that entails is, you know, we have Safe and Home has a, um, a dedicated remote supports team that is there for the individuals. We also have a dedicated client service team that's there for the individuals and their families to make sure that we are creating a um, support plan that can support an individual and ha help them to live independently. We have a combination of highly trained remote support specialists who are available, they're 24 seven, um, anytime via phone, tablet, any device they have, geocom device, any any piece of technology, we are available 24-7 for them. When did Safe and Home start? 2013. What was the precipitating reason why uh, Safe Home got into this business? So we started out with um, aging adults. Um, it, it was seniors and needing care in their homes, just helping them live independently. And then it branched out to working with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Is there specific disabilities uh, that you work with, or is it just a broad range of emotional and physical problems? It is it, a variety. It is whatever needs. So we would support individuals that have seizure management. We support individuals with medication management. We support individuals with fall risk mitigation, uh, safe, visitor safety, elopement, kitchen safety, overnight support, um, community engagement. Um, this can be with any individual, any kind of disability, intellectual or, or physical. So do you have an individual come in um, to their home to work with that individual? How would that be done in an individual's home? So first we have account executives that are out in the field that are going to meet with an individual and their family. They're gonna discuss um, solutions and then they're gonna you know, 
send something over to client services, a proposal, client services will reach out to the individual, the family, the case manager, and have the discussion of, of the supports that are needed. Oh, and that's, that's where we'll determine if it's medication management, fall risk, or any of the above. Once we figure out, out that part of it and have, you know, we meet with the individual on a meeting and, and they let us know what they're looking for. We will then sit down and go over what equipment we can put in their home and, and how we you know, go about it. Just say an individual calls in and says that they need some help with medication management. We are going to set up in their home, you know, a medication dispenser that will dispense at designated times for them. So the individual, if there's a fear of the individual forgetting that they took their medication or taking too much medication, you know, the, the medication dispenser will open up at designated times with only the, the amount of medication they should be taking. We would then get on a call with them via their tablet. And yes, we can do it over a phone, but that wouldn't be visually observing. We'd visually observe through a tablet. Um, Hi, Chris, how are you doing today? You have a great evening. And we'd, we'd get in a you know generalized conversation and then we'd be like, okay, are you ready to take your medication? And then the individual would say yes. And then they their medication dispenser would open up and the medication would come out and then they'd take it. Um, that way it keeps the individual safe, but it also lets them, you know, live independently and be able to manage their, their medication and take their medication without the worry of, of, of taking too much or not taking it. Do you, do you provide service animals? We do not provide service animals, but we have individuals that, that do have service animals. Chris has a, a beautiful service animal. Um, and so we might interact via the tablet and, and talk to them about their service animal. I have their service in, and they um, have really helped me a lot through the day. Um, they call me, check in on me, ask me how I'm doing, what I'm going to do for fun. And all their reactions help me get it more excited about getting out of bed, doing something. Um, instead of having staff there in my home, um, I don't have to have somebody with me at all times. Um, I have remote support. Also, just like I'm out right now, I'm at a cafe in Portsmouth, Ohio, and I have this. It's called Geocom. I call it Geocom. And um, and if I just need to talk to somebody, if I feel if I feel like I'm nervous or I feel danger or anything, instead of calling nine one one, I could push this button, and I'll push it right now, um, and it will it will. It starts beeping. Um, it starts beeping. So as soon as that starts beeping, it will um, start ringing and telling me, thank you for calling Safe and Home. And somebody at the remote support team will, will answer. And what I like about it is they have my plan. They have everything about me. And they know everything about me. And they're able to help me without calling 911. It's ringing now. Hello. Hello. Hey, I'm just um, testing out my geocom, making sure it works um, before um, I go out and sit on the patio with my friend. Um, so I just wanted to make sure it's working. Okay. I will. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So that, that little thing really helped me. Because they reminded me to stay dehydrated. They reminded me, you know, um, I have my service dog, you know, just be mindful that, you know, I, I have water. She didn't say that, but it reminded me um, that, you know, I need to have water for my dog too. And also a good piece to that is if you go out in the community with that and just say Chris takes his dog for a walk and they go down three, four, five blocks and, um, get sidetracked, make a wrong turn. You know, he's able to push that button and we're able to ping his location of where he's at and get someone to him. Um, if he's close to home and we're able to see on the map and we can direct him to, you know, oh, just let's, let's make a right, go down, you know, Smith street and then turn left on here, or we're able to get someone out to his location. So that is very, that's what, very helpful. That's what I like about this little um, um, gadget. Because if I feel unsafe, they're there to just talk to me um, until I get home or I get to where I want to go um, safely and make sure I'm safe. Uh, because they can ping and get the, get the uh, GPS 
um, up at DYM, just making sure I get there safely. That's what I like about it. So suppose that uh, I, I, I discovered that I'm, I, I have a, a, a major problem with my eyesight and, it, it, and I know that I'm going to go blind in the next three or four months. How do I contact you or do you contact someone in my health care to let me know about your services? So generally, generally, most individuals have a like a case manager or a support coordinator that they work with. Um, and then they would they'd be in contact with them and then they would reach out to us. You can also reach out to us via our website. Anybody could reach out. You could reach out right now on our web, our safe and home website. And um, there's information once you go on that website that you can find where there's a contact and then there's phone numbers there that you can reach out to us. Um, and it's just safeandhome.com. And that's that's a way. But for an individual, um, like like Chris has a, you know, a support coordinator or a, an SSA that he works with. And so they would reach out and request services and then schedule a meeting with us. And that's how that would start. Chris, how did how did you find out? Uh, about safe and home. I've been connected with um, half of my life with uh, the disability development disability county board, uh, and I have an SSA. Uh, and he had came to my house and said, "Chris, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, make sure everybody is willing and able to use technology to live independent." Um, I was scared, I was afraid to live on my own um, because some things that happened when I was living on my own, some things that happened um, that wasn't uh, a very, very good. Um, and I was afraid um, that those things might happen again. And so my SSA said, Chris, here in Syreda County in Portsmouth, Ohio, we now have safe in home. Would you like to, would you like to try them out? You'll be the first person to ever have safe and home in your home um, to have this. And they said, I said, yeah, I'll be willing to try it out. Check them out. See what it's all about. They came in with these cameras. They came in with the tablets, the geocom. And I was, I was like, I don't know if I want all that. Then I reminded myself, I want to live independent, right? And then when I live independent, um, you know, I don't want to feel like I have those things um, coming back to me. And so I got connected with Safe and Home and was able to um, use Safe and Home. Now I feel safe in my home and be able to be independent. So Kelly, what are a few of the unique situations that your company has come into um, that really uh, demonstrates your capabilities of helping just about anyone. So I would say, so I, I always look at it as, I mean, like you said, I said, you can go on our website and see like testimonials. I always like to, when I'm talking to people, um, you know, I, you know, I'm not using names or anything, you know, but I, you know, have individuals that have been on support and they've been on support with us for a really long time. And, you know, as they grow, you know, you, you see them. You see them when you first start working with them, right? You create their support plan. You you see where they're at. You know, living at home with a family member, and then as they grow, getting more independent and, and wanting to branch out on their own and not live at home anymore. And us helping them be successful with that, um, to the point where, you know, moving out on your own, you know, building a relationship, getting married, you know, having children, still being on support with us, and and still getting the benefit of what we do and still knowing that we're there for them at any time if they need something. Um, also working with individuals, you know, we have this thing, it's, we don't provide this thing called relay service, but relay service is a thing that's out there and it works compatibly with safe and home and our technology. And so it is Amer with American Sign Language. So we're able to support individuals with, American Sign Language via an interpreter on, so if, if the individual calls in, it automatically calls to their interpreter, their interpreter reaches us and we do our check-ins, we do our any daily reminders, um, 
anything that we need to do, we're able to do that right there. And, and before months and months and months ago, years ago, that wasn't a thing. We weren't able to do that. And, and I know there was individuals that were trying to come on that, you know, were hearing impaired and they needed to use American sign language. And we were unable to do that. We're now able to do that because we found a system that works with our system. And so we're able to now support a large percentage of individuals out there that we weren't about a year ago. Now, I know that uh, uh, one of your offices is in California, uh, but I'm, I'm assuming that you serve all 50 states. No, we, we serve right now. There's 17 states. There's 15 that we're actively working in and uh, three more that we are working on getting in. We're finishing up some licensing stuff to to be in those states. The, the certifications that you have to go through with each state. Uh, it sounds uh, rather interesting. It, they they're, they are um, pretty big, pretty large. Um, it takes a lot to be certified in a state. There's lots of training that you have to go through. Um, it's it's a it's a long process, um, but it's wonderful and rewarding, especially for the individuals that we're able to support once we're in there. So, how long have you been involved with Ohio? Ohio was our first state that oh. we opened up in. I, I'm assuming that uh, many individuals come from all walks of life and yes. all types of disabilities. Yes. And with with Chris, uh, I, I know that uh, you've assisted him. He, he speaks very highly of the technology that you uh, provide to him, uh, both low and high tech. Um, how long have you, can I ask how long you've been working with Chris? I've been working with Chris for four years now. Four years. And obviously he has uh, always taken advantage of the, the technology. Uh, do you find that other individuals are as eager as Chris uh, to get a hold of the technology? Or is there a learning curve? Um, I, I definitely think there there's always a learning curve with everything, but I think most of our individuals are very eager. Um, there's a process when we when we install equipment before we before the time that we start support. Um, there's just a lot of steps that we have to do. Um, but the equipment generally is installed first, and then we start these other processes. So individuals are very eager they start calling in ahead of time they start they, they have it right they have that equipment they're like i'm going to use it and and they start calling in and we're always going to answer we will answer every call it you know and so we'll have an individual that may call in and they're not on so technically on support yet because we don't have their support plan done we haven't had all the meetings um they just have their devices and they're eager to use them. So, of course, we answer them. If they have a geocom, we're going to answer that geocom and we're going to take the best notes as possible. They're, you know, the remote support specialist is going to reach out to client services and say, hey, you know, Bob just called in. You know, he hasn't officially started remote supports, but 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 he he's already calling in. Then we're going to, you know, we'll reply. We'll get on real quick with his family and let's get all the information we need. Let's get him started. You know, but we do see that we see a lot of individuals that are very, very eager to start. What about those um, those that have a lot of behavior issue that you know um, uh, mom and dad or you know some neighbor friend whoever maybe um, are concerned that they can't live on their own? Is that true, or is that something that you guys are providing to help um, that individual to be like, oh wow, I can cook something. Oh wow, I can make my bed or whatever it may be, oh, I can take my own medicine by myself. So what, what's your thoughts on that? So I feel that every individual can be on support or has the opportunity to be on support. Um, you're, you're talking behavioral, let's just say an individual is not like, like I said earlier, not wanting to take their medication or, or not wanting to brush their teeth or just, just little things like that. Remote supports is able to help and assist with that because like I said, individuals don't want to have a house full of people. They want to be able to be alone and live independently and show us that they can do that. And, and by showing us, we can set up equipment in their home so they don't have to have people in their home. So if we just say we set up a smart button in their home, we could put a smart button, it's a little device, put it in their bathroom, and we could set it up to give us an alert. When they push that button, it lets us know that 
You know, Bob went in the bathroom and he pr pushes it when he comes out to let us know that he brushed his teeth. You know, so he's letting us know without having someone, you know, bugging them about it. He's telling us I've done this thing. You know, when we do a check-in call later on at 8 p.m. with him, we could say, hey, Bob, how's it going? You have a good evening? Mm -hmm. Oh, did you know, what'd you have for dinner? And then, you know, go over whatever you're talking, what'd you do for the day? Um, oh, I see that you brushed your teeth because you're not telling him, hey, did you, or, or go brush your teeth or, you know, you're, you're, you've set something up in his home. So he can let us know that he did something. So we could just bring it up later. And it's just saying like, oh, I, I see that you brushed your teeth. All right, awesome. So let, and then just move on with your conversation. So you're you're not making him feel any type of way. He knows I did my thing. I brushed my teeth. They have faith in me. I did it. I acknowledge that I did it. And and so that's that's kind of what we do in our meetings. We, we kind of learn exactly what they're looking for and how we can tailor those devices around that to make them be the ones that are are doing the thing, showing us that they're they're living independently in their home. So is is there a cost to your services or is it provided by some of the supportive uh, uh, um, organizations that assist the individual? Yes, there are costs, but that goes through waivers and, and different things. Um, every individual is differently. I, I can't talk on anyone um, because everyone's waivers are differently. Um, there's funding for transportation, funding for housing, funding for different things, and that goes those are conversations like with their case managers and, and stuff like that. Um, once someone comes on support, I have those conversations with the case manager and and, and we go from there. I, I know that we're coming to uh, a close with our program. What are, what are some things, Kelly, you would like uh, the listening audience to be aware about uh, safe and home? I want everyone out there to understand that, that safe in home can help reduce the need for in-person support during the, during the day, any time of the day. It could be the nighttime, daytime. Um, it increases independence and self-determination for individuals. Um, so I just want people to remember that. Like, And I want families to remember that Like, we, we know it's really hard for a family to say, we need help or we want someone else to step in. I want them to know that they have safe in home. We're family. We're family to all of our individuals and we're there to help them. And we're there to help the families also, not just the individuals. Um, we just want to make sure that, you know, everyone's able to, you know, live independently and um, be able to go out in society, live day to day on their own and know that they always have that support of Safe and All. And I know, Chris, you have always talked very highly about Safe and Home. Share to, care to share any? additional information about them? Um, I, the, I would say reach out to them because they can help individuals be independent, help you be independent, travel independent. Like if I'm having a bad day and I can't, my, my speech is not clear enough, I'm gonna take a taxi to, let's say to the coffee shop. I can have my, my remote support team on my, on my thing, on my geocom. And they can tell the taxi driver where to go, where to take me. If I need help remembering what I need on my list at the grocery store, they can help me. So um, don't be afraid to take that step and, and ask about remote support and, and see how it could be important in other, in other individuals' lives and helping them be independent. But, but Kelly, I, I, I want to thank you very much for uh sharing the information that you have I, I know that uh july is uh disability month and i i know that chris celebrates uh a variety of different ways uh in ohio uh, about disabilities uh, how about in california is disabilities uh programs available there there, there are programs available here. They they do lots of um, outreach. Um, I think for Safe and Home, we celebrate individuals with disabilities each and every day. It's not just a month. Chris, great guests that you have. Uh, do you want to say anything about uh, the upcoming programs that you have available? I just want to say thank you, Kelly, for coming on. And yet, um, all the... Um, service dog awareness week um, up to um, disability month 
Um, we celebrate all over America um, the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's 33 and um, it's the 33 anniversary of Americans with Disabilities Act, and I am proud to say I am an ally for anybody and everybody with multiple disabilities. And I'm proud of how far we came and how many doors we have opened and how many um, minds we have changed and, and, and people understand about people with disabilities. How important it is to get inside of a bathroom or inside your business. How important it is um, to have a ramp and different things like that. And so for 33 years, we've been strong and holding strong and still educating. So we're talking with Kelly Ferrari. She's a senior manager of client uh, services and remote support. Um, feel free to, to give her a call or look on the website safeandhome.com. And, and if anyone ever has any questions at all, you can always reach me at kferrari at safeandhome.com. All right. I, I, I want to thank both you, Chris and Kelly, for uh, technology for independence. Thank you.